built back in the early 1960s, about 62, 63. But the idea was, was to create more processing of the timber that was leaving the area. If you look at some of these wonderful pictures that we've got hanging on the wall here, um, you can see in the background here, this one picture, and this is actually right here at the station, what you're looking at. You can see the trees are pretty much gone from the picture. Um, you know, even here, there's a few trees left, but there's been a lot of, a lot of clearing. And so what happened was, was, was that this whole area in Eastern Kentucky, for the most part, was clear-cutted in the early 19th century, you know, right around at the, uh, you know, 1900s, early 1900s. And so what happened was, was if you think about it, a tree takes about 50 to, to 80 years to reach maturity. So um, if you think about 1900 to 1962, well, you can kind of put the timeline together and realize, well, there was just a lot of timber growing here now that, was um, you know highly priced timber, and um, and so it was being cut and and put on rail carts and hauled out of the area, and with no processing done to it, and so that's why the the uh, this grant was put together to 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 build this facility, and so the idea was was you know we, we build a, a workforce a skilled set, and then from that will lead to um, more value added or processing to the timber before it leaves the area. So there's a lot of history here and a lot of how things developed and happened over time that relates back to here within the college. So we've tried to take the facility and use it uh, for a couple of different functions. Um, one, for industry support, and two, for um, trying to educate the general public about forestry issues, right? And, uh, and so what you're looking at right here is one of the programs that we do. We do these little workshops where a um, group of folks will come in the center and we will let them or help them make one of these items that you see right here, one of these wood items. So we do some industry training as well. Um, as a matter of fact, you can see this, this chart here on the wall. That's actually a grading chart. So one of the things that gets done here uh, periodically is a lumber grading short course. Um, as well as an edgy, edging and trimming short course. That's happened here as well in, in the last little bit. And then we get back in the facility and we'll show you some of, some of the other things that we do related to, to some of the machine work. Now, this table right here, it's up here because um, the, four years, the four year forestry students that are based in Lexington, they actually spend roughly a week here. And, and each one of them makes, gets, to, gets to make a table, one of these tables right here, and take it home with them. And so what we do is, is we set up and run this in a production run, and then we chart all of the costs that's associated with the production of the table. Um, and we run this in a production environment. And then when they're done, they have to do a report on why, why, why did it cost what it did to produce this table, you know? And what value added did we make to the table? Did we, did we actually add any value or did we go in, the, we go in reverse? And so um, this has really been a good tool to get the, the students to study forestry to understand why it's so important to grow nice, straight, clear trees in the woods. Yeah, so we, you know, I mentioned that we were trying to do extension activities, which is a primary thing here. But also, we, we're trying to mix in a little bit of research. So this pad, what you see right here, is a research project for uh, a student within the Department of Forestry and Natural Resources to monitor um, drying uh, white oak staves for the bourbon industry. And so we hope to get a bunch of staves sitting out here and they're tracking the process of uh, our progress of how those staves are losing moisture, uh, maybe even how they're getting some back, you know, in certain conditions. And so that's what this pad's for. And, and hopefully it'll be a bit, uh, pretty, pretty nice item to add to our research here at the center. What you're looking at right here are what we call tree cookies. And, um, and they're white oak. And they're going to eventually be on display at the uh, Fraser Museum in Louisville. So when, when the Bourbon Trail, when, when you first get introduced to it or when it starts, it's meant to start at the Fraser Museum in Louisville. And so we're gonna, this is all part of, of adding to their display there um, on, on barrel production, basically. Um, and of course, you need the barrel for the, for the bourbon production. And then these here are barrel heads. So this is a, 
a, a pretty neat project right here that we did. And basically these represent the first certified for sustainability grown white oak that went into a bourbon barrel. So all these tops were made from that certified material. This right here is a collection of, of lumber that we have that we use for the different programs. But I will point out that there's, there's two cubby holes of chestnut up here. And uh, we do have cameras on those <laughs> because those things uh, could disappear if we're not keeping an eye on them. There's just not that much chestnut left, um, particularly in those kind of quantities. So all the equipment that you see in here that's this dull gray, that was all original to 1962 when the facility was, uh, was put in production. Anything that's different, like this CNC router over here is a different color, that's been added since then. So the router's been added, and then I'll show you, there's a couple pieces up here that's been added as well. So one of the programs that, that I haven't talked about is Win With Wood. So Win With Wood is a program that's designed for high school students and middle school students. And basically, uh, and it's a 4-H program, and basically they come to the center, their teachers bring them, their club directors bring them, um, and they come to the center here and we have, we have this whole, whole area here full of tables with different things on them that they're identifying and, 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 and actually having a contest to see um, how much of it that, they, that they've learned and, and, and know. So some of the events are, are compass and pacing, um, woodworking tool ID, forestry tool ID, um, we, uh, we have a wood ID uh, contest component to it, um, and invasive species, that's another one, another component to it. So they come and they compete in all these different events, and then the winner will get, the senior winner will get a scholarship to attend the University of Kentucky uh, College of Ag. It's a $500 scholarship, it's not a whole lot of money, but it's a little bit for those that really want to participate in, in further education. We're doing that not because um, we're really trying to, not because we're trying to teach the kids so much, but we really want to get to the teachers. And if we get the teachers teaching the kids, then we impact a lot more people, a lot more students than if we're just trying to impact the individual student themselves. So one of the other programs that we, that we do here is an entrepreneurship program. We've been doing these, we've had this program in place for about 10 years or so. And so our idea there is, is the facility's not used to its max. So we have, we have lag time here that somebody that has an interest in doing wood, wood products, either as a very serious hobby or trying to make a living from it, we like to support them uh, by allowing them to use some of the equipment here in the center. And like I said, we've, you know, over the last 10 years or so, we've worked with probably a dozen or so in different capacities. John Markham here is one of them that we've worked with. He's been here almost since the beginning. The idea is that we get, them, we get people in here, we train them, or help train them, or let them use a piece of equipment maybe they don't have to make a particular product. So lastly, I'll talk about this machine right here. This is a molder. And um, any baseboard or casing or crown mold or any of that kind of thing that's in your house has basically went through a machine like this. And um, so here in Kentucky, our industry uses this. It's a very high production machine and it, uh, it's almost required if, you're, if, they're, if someone's doing anything or a plant's doing anything in any kind of quantity. So over the years, we've used this machine to train a lot of industry people. And uh, a lot of times somebody will get, you know, they'll be working, helping an operator on the machine, and maybe that operator leaves or whatever, and then the person that's helping becomes the machine operator, and he never has any, any um, training he just kind of throwed on it and said, here, kind of figure it out in a lot of, a lot of regards. And so we're trying to gap that bridge a little bit, uh, helping uh, those plants that, you know, need some formal training. And of course, we don't have all the answers to everything, but, you know, we'll certainly try to help teach what we know. And so we've done that over the years quite, quite effectively, I think. And we do all this because we're supporting a $13 billion industry here in the state of Kentucky. And again, I think that, that goes unknown. A lot of people here doesn't, don't realize that the wood industry is that large here in the state. And the, the key component to it is just not in one area. It's not like an automotive plant that's sitting in Georgetown. It, it's, our industry is spread out all across the, the state. So it impacts a lot of rural area. 
um, and uh, very important to our state economy.